Having said this, so I rush to give the floor to Mr. Bolinari, who is founder and CEO of Gate Technologies. Mr. Bolinari, please. Thank you, Professor. Hello, everybody. Uh, we got a little uh, fatigue, so we can shake it off here for a second. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. Well, let me start my time. Thanks so much for coming, and uh, I'm in. Thank you for organizing. Thank you uh, again for bringing together such a great group and an unbelievable battle. Uh, I'm here to tell you a uh, three-year story in less than 15 minutes at this point, and, and really driven out of policy and changes it, and, and from a U.S. lens initially. Uh, the slides up there, I'm sorry. Uh, Michael. or handling rules, decimalization, reg NMS, and really the changes that have caused in the marketplace and the lack of flow of capital to the emerging companies. And as we all know, the largest portion of our job creation comes from the private sector. So when we began to look at this phenomenon, we realized that we had traditionally 500 IPOs occurring here in the United States that went down to 120 IPOs. And, and, and probably some would argue maybe even a little bit less than that. Compounding that, we saw the size of those IPOs went dramatically larger, billions and billions of dollars. So you weren't seeing that $50 million, $100 million IPO anymore that was the, was the engine of capital for that company to grow at the next level. We saw at the same time, as that was happening, since less IPOs were occurring, less exit strategy was that we always asked for going in. What's my exit? How am I coming out? How am I being driven by? Well, the venture capital hold period went from four and a half years to 10 years. But now we had a compounding of the internal rate of return for those venture capitalists saying, this isn't such a great model. We call it an inverted liquidity funnel that started to happen. And again, that was compounded by the fact that people that weren't invested who were sitting on the sidelines saying, no way I'm coming into this game. I'm going to be sitting there for an undetermined period of time. So we looked at it, and, and we, we uh, decided, well, we couldn't fix the public market, but let's talk about new market infrastructure, technology, new market infrastructure to us creates new investment practices. What are those new investment practices about? New ways to capture alpha and deliver capital for good. On the other side of that, for entrepreneurs and small businesses to access capital. We started uh, Gate Global Impact with an investment from Prudential uh, about two years ago with a mission to, to begin to meld the world of socially responsible, environmental cause related need for capital with access and delivery of capital. We thought very, very simply that the world had to evolve. We had amazing companies globally and organizations who were looking to access capital that were delivering sustainable returns but didn't know how to access the capital. We come back to the north and we hear lots of people talking about, well, I'd love to deploy capital, but I don't know how to do it. For us, that became a challenge to create a technology or a mechanism to display those opportunities and match them with capital. Yeah, uh, and, and again, I really don't really like PowerPoints because I have to kind of stick to the script. But um, so uh, going with that, that basic uh, fundamental analysis, we said we have to create structure, something that you can understand when we begin to talk about the delivery of good, uh, more than just saying you made this investment, you should feel good about it. How do we define that good? How do we have metrics around it? That comes from reporting practices, information data being compiled and reported back once those organizations receive the capital. So as we did that, we said, well, how do we, how do we open up the, the, the pools of capital beyond philanthropy and donation-based? How do we move it to our traditional financial investors, whether those are corporations, institutions, portfolio managers, high net worth individuals, who are now looking for something more from their investment than just a pure rate of return? How do we demonstrate to them that they can get a rate of return and a quantified social and environmental 
uh, metrics associated with how much good they did on that side. And we, we tend to call that impact investing on our side of the equation. Uh, and I think it was Jeffrey earlier who said, you know, the entrepreneur that started, you know, have to be that optimist. I think I had that. One of my partners called me a psychotic optimist, and I don't think he meant that as a compliment. Uh, it's really believing to your core that there's something special. When the rest of the world is telling you, no way, you believe in your mom and dad, and your wife, and everybody else, uh, and really believe in that you can effectuate that change as an entrepreneur. It's not being a little bit funny, like Prudential believed in this, and said, wow, if we can go into things and start to create portfolio management tools, metrics, uh, the analysis associated with it, uh, began to be how we did. And we uh, then partnered with the Overseas Private Investment Corporation in the United States. Uh, we became an EDN uh, Enterprise Development Network originator to, to source deals in a structured way. Uh, just, I guess, uh, four weeks ago, we partnered with the United Nations Global Compact, something we have called Action Hubs. More and more, we were finding pockets of activity that had opportunity and perhaps investors that lacked the connectivity of how to effectuate that transaction. Not having any money away, but there's some potential to part with you about it. Uh, and, and, and the list begins to go on. But when we talk about, again, policy, this is about policy. Major change here in the United States, April 5th, 2012. And, and, and Matt alluded to part of it earlier, and it was kind of to, to leave some of the thunder for me on crowdfunding. Thank you. Um, the, the Jobs Act. And if anybody's not familiar with it, this is the biggest change in the United States of America. Legislation surrounding financial services. Title II, and, and it gets a bit commingled in crowdfunding, but Title II speaking to the ability to advertise for the first time in US history private security and golf workers. What does that really mean? The removal of the solicitation ban. So for the first time, private security in the United States can be advertised. Advertised on radio, television, print. Oh my goodness, this thing called social media. We're talking about disruption of the system. And, I, and again, we, we heard some allusion to this, or alluding to it. Well, maybe we're not going to fix all these other things because there's a new paradigm here. The ability to efficiently disseminate information about financial products on the internet using social media networks, incredibly powerful and efficient. And when we take that and put it into a structure of best practices, standardization around what we do at Gate Impact, using a broker deal or regulatory framework that does have standardization, that has best practices, suitability requirements. So you begin to create um, and treat these new asset classes as, as, a, as a true investment. A great slide by JP Morgan, talking about uh, $500 trillion globally in investable assets. If you just move 1% of that, as they're predicting, to impact investing, $500 billion to be deployed to this sector. Well, we think a little bit differently when we think about how impact investing really focuses around the SMEs, uh, the entrepreneurs, and if you could create a universal system, a systemic change of how do you deploy and access capital and measure it globally, that implementation shortfall, as we like to call it, from 500 trillion to a half a billion, that gap can close. And tremendous access of capital and job creation for the deliverance of good derives out of that. Uh, and again, I'll just I'll run through these quickly. I'm going to see if I can stretch this over here. These are just some screenshots of the system that we've developed to give you a little bit of a flavor of some of the things that we do. So really, you, you can locate anywhere in the world. Uh, our system is built in uh, every foreign currency, spot converted. Uh, in most of the major foreign languages is already uh, converted into. Uh, pick any region in the world. You can drill down and look for opportunities based on uh, sector, um, cost-related issues, um, any number of things. And really, some of the changes that we started to do here is the metrics and the rating system. Again, getting a level of standardization so the portfolio managers, people have a fiduciary responsibility to their investors, have a mechanism of which they can measure and rate and use those ratings to invest. Uh, and, and again, I, this will certainly be available if anybody wants to go through detail. But again, this, this just speaks to kind of the, the, the level of sophistication and development that's done. And I think when you go back to the policy change, having policy that can be effectuated and, and be transmitted through technology, and again, we'll go back to Title uh, Three, 
which really speaks to the crowdfunding aspect and, and tremendous success in the home, crowdsourcing the key the Kickstarters in the world. But those are donation-based and group-based, meaning you would put some money in and you wouldn't get any return, or you would get a product ahead of time for a second. Why this is so meaningful, and I think particularly, I would say, the base of the investment pyramid and the base of the entrepreneurial uh, pyramid is the fact that now, for the first time in history, those investors can deploy capital in the form of equity or loan and get a rate of return in the United States. Now, the ability to aggregate individual <coughs> investors to a, a common funding goal or cause for a company is game-changing, I believe, is basically. To be able to do that on a systematic basis and allow for driven by community. We hear about all these other intangible things of why people make an investment. Well, I want to help my neighbors open a restaurant. There's this great other company who's been around for 10 years, but they're so long they can't fit the boxes of the traditional bank to get the most public expansion back. So it's a new engagement. Wisdom of the crowd, giving the ability of the crowd to determine based upon visibility to a particular product or company, should this be funded. So again, we're dislocating the traditional financial process where we're saying, what was that big growth term? Or organizations said this was good or bad. Guess what, they don't always get it right. <coughs> so if we can rely upon being collaborative, and what, what we find here in the crowdfunding side of the equation, it's concentric circles if you think about it. <coughs> the immediate circle, unless you're immediate buy-in of connectivity, reaches 30 to 35 percent of the people who know you best are saying, good idea, good person. The next level of circles will not come in and begin to invest. So it's, it's kind of validation from the inside outward, and again, using technology to disseminate that, and we're seeing great global traction in that. And I would say a lot, large part of the globe because of our uh, slow adoption from the SEC level of deploying uh, or writing the final rules here in crowdfunding, other parts of the world are actually surpassing the rest of the execution of that. Again, this is just a, a, a little bit to, to show you some of the asset classes that uh, we could transact in at the event. Um, we could use uh, cash credits. Um, <laughs> talk about um, the, the level of, of utilizing this and moving it beyond the traditional donation and, and uh, web base. These are some of the tool sets that we needed to measure in the portfolio analysis, holding these. Uh, uh, what you call holder of record. As you would with a public company, how you hold those securities no longer in a paper certificate form and an alternative uh, asset class. Hold it electronically. Why is that so important? Because it validates that authenticity of that. But more importantly for us, it allows the other side of our technology work is the secondary trading side. Again, what have we even talked about in the beginning? How am I going to have an exit? Well, we created a system where Alternative investment, private company share, could have a secondary trading ability for liquidity. So now, a bit of the new ecosystem that we think is much more efficient, the place to another policy change as part of the Jobs Act, Title 5 and 6, which used to say uh, 500 shareholders. If you had 500 shareholders of private, uh, one, sorry, two minute warning, as a private company, uh, you were forced to be a public re uh, reporter. Well, tremendous cost, maybe half a million or a million dollars associated with that for a small company, that was too much to bear. Right? So now in this mechanism, you can go from 500 to 2,000 shareholders of the private company. Access to liquidity, access to capital, new ecosystem. Um, we're going to skip to a couple of other things. Yeah, this is uh, going to the right slide here. So uh, some of the things we're going to deploy in technology around ecotourism globally, again, to create the destination for tourism to be a job creator and a GDP. Uh, we, we talk a lot about gender equality, women empowerment. Uh, Gate Women is something we launched two weeks ago with uh, Maria Bello, a great activist and, and uh, actress, and Claire Munn, to really create a sexualized location for female uh, starting CEO companies to have a destination to access capital and for investors to go to that destination. Uh, another quick one that we have. Uh, around what we call impact Wi-Fi, using uh, UH television analog signals to deliver broadband capability to rural communities. Project in Kenya that we're working on um, with, with Microsoft, Microsoft and Indigo Telecom, closing the digital divide. 
And, and again, um, uh, Jeffrey spoke about that earlier, his illustration of, of the agricultural uh, first thing is government having access to all these things. So the closing the digital divide and having access to broadband drives education, drives healthcare, and ultimately, we believe, drives commercial applications to state sustainability that creates jobs and begins to chase them. One last slide, I'm sorry, I'm probably on my last 10 seconds. Shotmatic, uh, awesome technology that we've now merged in. The ability to take voice on an electronic and inanimate object and overlay that with dissemination of information. And, and I encourage you to look at shotmatic.com. But very quickly, think about the ability on your Twitter, your Facebook, any social media to deliver your own voice in a message. Overlays right on top of your social media. The power of that entrepreneur to be able to deliver that message and you can feel and hear that passion. This little QR code right there with the, with the speaker on it, swipe it. Guess what happens? You get the voice of the entrepreneur delivering a specific message that can link right to that product, right to that company, right to their, their offering page to, to suit your Anyway, um, and I'll officially write at that point. Thank you.